can we in the body of Christ agree to disagree and realize, look, this stuff is not uh, a heaven or hell issue, right? Now, you just, you might not agree, but I've looked all through the Bible front and back and tried to see how people try to make it a heaven or a hell issue. It's not. The Bible says, repent uh, to be baptized, you know, in Jesus' name, you're going to be filled with the Spirit. John 3 says to be born of the water and the Spirit. That's the requirement to be the kingdom. I've read the Bible from front to back. I've studied it numerous times. And the only thing that makes it a heaven or hell issue is people's pride. And so, can we in the body of Christ agree to disagree? Hey, y'all, I'm back with another video. I did another video earlier, but, you know, YouTube won't let me post it. It's about the V, but it's on my Facebook page. So you can check it out. But this video here, man, is about this guy named Marcus Rogers. He has a lot of following. I mean, over six figures. And this is what you call a false teacher. He said that the body of Christ should be able to disagree and agree and still be able to be one in fellowship with each other. And he said he read the Bible back and front. And you telling me he hasn't read verses like this, many verses like this. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, that's the problem. He don't understand this doctrine, what the Bible says. Receive him not into your house, need to bid him God's speed, for he that bid him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. So if you're saying, oh, we cool, brother. I know we don't agree with each other, but we could still fellowship. You could still um, preach the false doctrine here and there, but we're all good. We're all one in Christ. This guy, I'm telling you, is a false pastor. Watch him. The Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness. And so we might not see eye to eye on everything, but I wonder, like, hey, can we just keep unity in the body? Check the video out. So the video he's referencing is, comes from a female named China McLean, who's speaking on the Trinity doctrine with the word Trinity, not in the Bible. But to this day, I, I really don't know what she's talking about. It didn't make no sense. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit here in a minute, about the Godhead. But the verse he's referencing is this one right here. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. If he was to finish it and pick up his Bible and actually read it, this is what it actually says. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentile, believed on in the world, received up into glory. It tell you who Jesus Christ was. It was God in the flesh, talking about the Godhead. Like I said, there's this argument. Are we going to see three people standing in heaven, two people standing in heaven, or just one, right? And people argue about that all the time, but that's just not a heaven or hell issue, period. And so I believe that the time is to have unity. And if you think you're right, you know, just pray for the other individual. Take it to the Lord in prayer. But I've seen people from both sides, you know, that are clearly spirit-filled, that God is clearly speaking to them. And I believe that's why it's important that we have unity, you know, it's ridiculous how the enemy has the body all divided up, and that's just one of his tactics. So let's talk about the Godhead a little bit before we go into the uniting of everybody. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. One, not two, not three. It says one. But he don't pick up his Bible and read it. And that's the problem when it comes to doctrine. He's talking about uniting. We could agree to disagree. What, what the Bible says right here, one sat on the throne. This is in Revelation. John the Revelator said this. One of the biggest problems why a lot of people don't believe this verse right here is because they have one of those phony Bibles which take out this verse completely. And I'm going to show you. But in the King James... It says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. These three are one. Look at what it says in these other Bibles. This is the New American Standard Bible. Look at verse 7. For there are three that testify, and it stops there. What happened? Look at the next one. Same thing. For there are three that testify. English Standard Version, for there are three that testify. 
So I just gave you three different ones. New International Version, English Standard Version, New American Standard Bible. And the King James lets you know that these three are one. So when you read that in these phony Bibles, it's saying, for there are three that testify. And that's all you're reading. That's where a lot of people are getting stuck at. Because their Bible is corrupt. The third statement that I want to leave you with today is that there is one God who coexists eternally in three distinct persons. This just simply means that God the Father is different or distinct or separate from God the Son, who is different or distinct from God the Holy Spirit, who is different from God the Father. But all of them are different persons or members of the Godhead. This is the reason why we should not refer to the Holy Spirit as an it, because he is just as much of a person or a member of the Trinity as God the Father and God the Son, because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit can speak to us and it also also refers to the Holy Spirit as one who can be grieved, right? So the Holy Spirit is not just some force. He's not an it. He is actually a person. You can't make this stuff up. He said they're separate. Look what the Bible says. I and my father are one. And he said they're separate. Let me go ahead and tackle some of these verses right quick. Just bear with me for the moment. The Bible says this. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. Now, in the Jehovah's Witness Bible says the word was a God. Look it up. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. And the word was made flesh. So it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was was made flesh that means god was in the flesh jesus christ the body pay very close attention y'all and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter why he say another comforter because he was the comforter at the time when he was here on the earth and when he leaves he's going to send another comforter but we're going to find out who that comforter is, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, remember, spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it see him not, neither know him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So we read, he's going to pray to the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Now look what he says here. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, now we're going to find out who's the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So he's saying who the father will send in my name. Pay attention. Jump to John 15, 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send. Now he's saying whom I will send. Before he said he's going to pray to the father that the Father will send. But now he's saying whom I will send. So either we got a contradiction or we believe what the Bible says, that Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. You see up there, he said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. And then jump down and says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. The spirit of truth. What is truth? Who is truth? Remember, he said he's going to send the spirit of truth. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So either we got two truth or Jesus Christ is the spirit of truth, like it says here. He's the way, the truth, and the life. I'm going to leave y'all with this last verse, but trust me, there's so many verses about this subject. It's just time consuming, but it's a lot. And I pray that you understood the Godhead here to wit that God was in Christ, re reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ. 
Pay attention. Read. We might not see eye to eye on everything, but I wonder, like, hey, can we just keep unity in the body? I'm going to make this part short, but here's the answer to this question. How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Mark on the Lord didn't just say, nah, don't worry about it. You guys' doctrine and teaching is all, but you guys could fellowship with each other and unite. He didn't tell them that. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed, as we said before. So say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. How can he even say... It's okay, we believe different things, but let's all unite. He didn't say that. So I don't know what Bible he reading. Here's one more. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. He's telling us the same mind, same judgment, no division among you. But yet this guy says... It's okay to agree to disagree. And then he said something about, you know, Paul and Peter, they had a, a disagreement with each other. But if you read Galatians 2, Paul was still into the face to not be a hypocrite. You think Peter stayed like that? No. They got it right. That's it, man. And I appreciate y'all listening. And I hope this gets out to him and he sees it and all those that believe in that false trinity doctrine and understood what I was trying to say. Thank y'all, and give me feedback on it.